Poland, the land of fields, potatoes, and delicious pierogi. Poland is a beautiful European country, but with a deep, dark history, shaped by its geography and its neighbors. It has the worst geographic position when it comes to defense, but even then, it is still not lost and is actually thriving. Today's Poland is also shaped by its pesky neighbors. Before that, Let's look to what this country is and where it is. The Republic of Poland is a country located in Central Europe with around 38 million people. Its capital and largest city is Warsaw, located slightly east of the center. Its language is Polish, a West Slavic language in which Czech and Slovak are also in the same family. Poland borders seven countries, Germany to the west, Czechia and Slovakia to the south, Ukraine to the southeast, Belarus to the east, Lithuania to the northeast, and this one tiny exclave of Russia, the Kaliningrad Oblast, which used to be part of Russia but you know, <laughs> World War II, communism years. Geographically, Poland is mostly a flat country bordering the Baltic Sea to the north and Carpathian Mountain Range to the south. Many rivers, like the Vistula, also transverse the entire country. Its western and eastern border is mostly flat, in which we'll explain later. So, I think you must have a brief overview of Poland. Let's proceed, shall we? Now let's talk about its neighbors. First, Czechia or Czech Republic and Slovakia. Today, the relations are pretty nice. All three are part of the Visegrad group, an important group in Central Europe, and all three basically seem to share values and vodka. Their languages are also slightly intelligible since they belong to the same West Slavic branch, but they're still quite different. Not so great though centuries ago. It was part of the Austrian Empire back then. Austria took part in the partition years and also controlled parts of southeastern Poland, or those areas in the map. After the empire fell, Czechoslovakia was born. However, the long border is not so clear. So, of course, border disputes happened mostly centered in the areas of Czechian Silesia, Orava territory, and Spish. These resulted in uneasy relations between both countries. Being centered around Greek powers is much harder though. So during World War II, there were talks about the confederation of both countries to deter outside aggression. But you know, Stalin is too uneasy to even allow it as it may threaten his future interests there. Eventually, both Poland and Czechoslovakia fell to Soviet influence. When communism fell and Czechoslovakia broke apart, relations improved since then. Fun fact, this June 2020, Poland invaded Czechia by accident, but it was mostly a border misunderstanding and everything is fine now. Then we proceed to Ukraine. First of all, it's quite complicated. Much of Ukraine was part of the massive Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and was later succumbed to the Russian Empire. Ukraine didn't become a state on its own until 1918 when the semi-recognized Ukrainian People's Republic and the West Ukrainian People's Republic centered in Eastern Galicia, which used to be the part of Austria-Hungary, were born. Because of nationalism and cultural differences by both Poles and Ukrainians living there, a war broke up, which resulted in Polish victory. An alliance was formed later between Poland's Josef Piłsudski and Ukraine's Simon Petliura in order to counter the advancing Red Army from the east, but it failed and as a result, Ukraine was divided between the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic under the Soviet Union to the east and Poland controlling the western parts. This brought a major blow to Polish-Ukrainian relations and ethnic tensions began to rise. During World War II, when Poland fell, the Ukrainian Insurgent Army or the UPA K-1 
carried out brutal massacres of Poles in Volhynia, in which tens or even hundreds of thousands of Poles were killed from 1943 to 1945. Some even considered a genocide, by the way. When World War II ended, all of southeastern Poland were ceded to the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, and the Polish population there were expelled to the recovered territories from Germany. When communism fell, relations warmed significantly, and Poland supported Ukraine against the Russian annexation of Crimea and to its integration to the European Union. The issue regarding the UPA and the massacre against Poles during World War II remains a controversial topic for both countries, and here we are today. Poles and Ukrainians in people are brothers, and they share a lot of Slavic values, and many Ukrainians also work in Poland. North of Ukraine is Belarus, another Polish neighbor. All of the lands now part of Belarus once belonged to the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and the Russian Empire. Belarusian nationalism didn't exactly spring up until the 19th to 20th century, and the Belarusian People's Republic was declared in 1918 in the wake of World War I. It is not as strong as the Ukrainian nationalism though, to be honest, and later the Belarusian lands were divided between Poland and the USSR, similar to Ukraine, which later established the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic. After World War II, the borders of Belarus were once again redefined when a huge chunk of northeastern Poland got annexed to the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic. After the fall of communism, Belarus at the time sought to integrate itself to the West, but that was when the white red white banner was its flag, meaning its government is still democratic. Poland at the time also pushed to integrate itself to the West, so they did push for an intermarium style project in the wake of the 1990s. When Alexander Lukashenko came to power though, he turned back to Russia for support and alliance. Lukashenko's government and Poland would not get that well though both governments pursue different views and paths. Poland would mostly support the pro-democracy movements in which as of August 2020 has sparked into full protests aiming to restore the white red white banner and topple the Europe's last dictatorship. Culturally, they are similar, sharing their vodka and tasty potatoes. There is also a handful of Polish minority living in Western Belarus. Lithuania is an interesting neighbor of Poland, as relations between both countries can be great on one period and really really terrible on another. It all started a long time ago, during the Middle Ages, when Lithuania was a massive grand duchy that controlled vast lands, and Poland is a kingdom to its west. External threats like the Muscovites and the Teutonic Order brought them together, resulting in a powerful alliance that defeated the enemies, like the Teutonic Order at the Battle of Grunwald. Later, in 1569, the Union of Lublin created a large country. Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. During those years, most Lithuanians were subject to colonization, but the Lithuanian language and culture still thrived. It was all fun and games until the partition years destroyed everything. Fast forward to the end of World War I, both Poland and Lithuania would re emerge independently. There are several proposals for a federal confederation in order to restore the good old days, but Lithuania choose to stay independent. Differences on border issues though, especially with the Lithuanian capital Vilnius or Wilno provoke a war, in which Vilnius was most of southeastern Lithuania were taken by Poland. This angered Lithuania and broke up relations from the early 1920s until 1938. What happened between those time periods is full of hostility, suspicion, and harsh treatment of minorities. See that cartoon uh, as an example. 
Although relations were restored in 1938, it is too late for it to happen since World War II is on the horizon. And by the time Poland fell, Vilnius was returned to Lithuania, but later fell under Soviet dominance still. After World War II, Vilnius region is to be keep Lithuanian and Poles are either moved, expelled, or Lithuanianized. Since both Poland and the Lithuanian Soviet Socialist Republic, another Soviet Republic to be USSR, are under Soviet zone, historical skirmishes are silenced. After the fall of communism, like most neighbors, relations warm significantly, especially when both joined EU and NATO. There is still a chunk of Polish minority though living in Lithuania, which can cause some issues and the historical bitterness might still exist in some extent, and particularly the older people, but the overall diplomatic relations going upward and much better now compared 100 years ago. And now, this is the most awaiting part. Much of Poland is located in the Northern European Plain, making the eastern and western border flat, open for invasion. This is the biggest flaw in Poland's geography. The nations west and east of Poland happen to be some of the most influential and powerful countries, historically wanting to dominate the continental European affairs. The country to the west is Germany, and to the right is Russia. Even though Belarus and Ukraine consists much of Poland's eastern border nowadays, Russia still technically borders Poland with its exclave known as the Kaliningrad Oblast, which used to be predominantly German, but well, you know, you know what happened after World War II. Historically, Poland is sandwiched between these two powerful nations and would often clash in Polish lands. Everything started in the Middle Ages when Germany was under the Holy Roman Empire, Poland as a kingdom, and Kievan Rus at the east. During these time periods, there were scenes of alliances, wars, trade, etc. But Poland, along with the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, were growing. New threats eventually came, such as the Teutonic Order, and they managed to completely crush it in the Battle of Grunwald, making Prussia a subject to Poland. They resisted the Mongols and even survived the Black Death with much less casualties. They also waged wars against the Moscovites to the east. At one point, they controlled Moscow before being pushed back. They also waged wars against the Ottomans in Vienna, saving the mostly Christian Europe from Ottoman expansion. Hence, you can see why Poles are being thought as saviors of Europe, after all. The Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth would later weaken, though due to a really bad and flat geography. This allowed the surging monarchies Prussia, Austria, and Russia to just easily partition the lands until it's all gone. Poland literally disappeared on the map from 1795 until the end of World War I. Sad Poland. But despite that, Polish nationalism, culture, and language thrived and independent Poland was re-established in the wake of World War I. But Poland's independence is already threatened by Vladimir Lenin's plans of communist revolution deep into Europe and a war already broke out. But this time, Poland won and this upset the USSR. Poland's geographic location is still very awful as it had to share a long border with the USSR and Germany, which would later become Nazi Germany. Both USSR and Nazi Germany hated each other, but they would prefer not to fight each other for now and divide and dominate what's between both. The molotov ribbentrop Pact divided Poland between both countries. Sounds familiar? Yes. For the second time, poor Poland. Both hated the Poles for different reasons. Hence, Poles suffered a lot. The Polish resistance staged a massive uprising against the Germans, in which return, Warsaw was almost completely flattened and many civilians killed. After World War II, all of Eastern Poland was to be annexed to the USSR, and in return, Poland would receive former German lands, pushing it westward. Poland is now effectively a puppet state of the USSR, with a relatively high level of control over it. 
Around this time, relations with East and West Germany began to improve through reconciliation and reparations, although the scars of war would remain up to date. After the fall of communism, Polish-German relations improved significantly as Poland had been leaning towards Western values by joining NATO and EU. But like mentioned, the scars of war are still a sensitive topic between both. Russia though, things are not looking favorably with their governments. Poland accuses Russia for historical revisionism, annexation of Crimea, being a security threat, among others. Russia accuses Poland for not being grateful for their liberation against Nazi Germany and perhaps leaning towards a pro-West nation. And the current situation continues up to today. Today, Poland is in a better state and thriving despite being partitioned twice by the same, almost mostly the same occupiers before in its history and enduring so much war, occupation, and harsh treatment. But still, Poland still borders both countries that historically participated in its partition and occupation. Poland also has significant relations with distant neighbors or countries that used to border Poland. During the polish lithuanian Commonwealth years, Poland bordered Habsburg Austria and the Ottoman Empire to the south. Poland and the Ottoman Empire would later engage in many wars against each other, and as mentioned, they defeated the Ottomans at Vienna. Austria would later participate in its partition years, gaining the southern bits. Poland also had an extensive influence on the Principality of Moldavia, which is now part of Romania, Moldova, and Ukraine. Having exchanged a lot of cultural information and as a result, there is a small Polish minority in today's Moldova. During the interwar years, Poland bordered Romania and Latvia. Polish-Latvian relations are generally friendly, even when anti-Polish Lithuania is on the horizon. They both cooperated against the Red Army during the Polish-Soviet War. Romania is a particularly close friend and an ally. The Polish-Romanian al alliance assured mutual benefit and cooperation during the interwar period. There are even proposals of a monarchistic union between both countries, but yeah, it never happened. At the start of World War II, up to 120,000 Polish troops withdrew to the Romanian bridgehead area to neutral Romania and Hungary. The majority of those troops joined the newly formed Polish armed forces in the West, in France and the United Kingdom in 1939 and 1914, which is really really huge. Even today, Poland and Romania both share the pro-West stance and have a high level of respect and cooperation with each other. Other distant countries like France and Italy are also historically close. With France is mostly to Bonaparte, which established the Duchy of Warsaw just a decade after the partition years. Bonaparte is even mentioned in the Polish anthem. France and Poland are also allies in the interwar period after the day, though don't forget that during World War II, France kind of betrayed Poland along with Britain, yeah, you know. Brit Italy though, always had close historical and cultural ties. Italians and Poles both support uprisings in nationalism against their occupiers. Each other's countries are mentioned in their own respective anthems. And Italy is also the first country to recognize the Second Polish Republic. Even during World War II, fascist Italy was still much more nicer to the Poles and actually never treated them brutally, unlike their German counterparts. Also, the Poles put a massive effort to liberate Italy against the Nazis, especially in the Battle of Monte Cassino. Today, they are still close friends as EU and NATO members. Sweden also had a long historical relations with Poland. There are several wars, alliances, treaties, etc. But the biggest conflict is the Swedish Zilaj. When the Swedish Empire invaded the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, though it never fully defeated it. Today, they are also quite close to it. And finally, Poland has this one neighbor. Whenever in its history, in its strength, or in occupation, whether the political climate will always, always be blood brothers, 
despite not bordering each other now. This country is no other than Hungary. This brotherhood is traced back to the Middle Ages when the royalties of both countries or kingdoms back then intermarried with each other. And also, both shared a common historic border and even a king at one point. During any crisis that erupts with each country, there is always the other to support and aid. This has been emphasized in many events, such as during the Hungarian Revolution of 1848, when Poles come into aid, in which General Josef Bem became a natural hero for both countries. During the Polish-Soviet War, Hungarians came in aid for Poland, even when Czechoslovakia was like, yeah, I cannot let your troops cross my country. During World War II, even when Hungary was part of the Axis, Hungary never made a single military action against Poland. Instead, Hungarians helped the Poles escape through their land and to Romania. During the Hungarian Revolution of 1956, Poles supported the Hungarian revolutionaries by donating blood. And after the fall of communism, both countries had further strengthened relations through the Visegrad Group. On March 12, 2007, Hungary's parliament declared March 23 as the day of Hungarian-Polish friendship, with 324 votes in favor, none opposed, and no abstentions. Four days later, the Polish parliament declared March 23 the day of Polish-Hungarian friendship by acclamation. Despite a troubled history and sometimes different alliances, both countries will never fight each other and instead will always be blood brothers from the beginning of the day. Poland, despite having the worst geography for defense, having pesky neighbors, and having some of the most troubled history in the entire Europe or even the world, is not yet lost and is thriving in Central Europe. Poland may have issues with most of your neighbors, with some still not going that well. But that's history, and now they enjoy vodka with pierogi. Okay. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my new channel. My channel is very new, and yeah, <laughs> please subscribe. Thank you.